This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Dorothy Gubo with me. Welcome to FYI, Dorothy. Thank you so much for having me this morning, Kathy. I have to thank Reverend Takui for making the connection for us, but uh, we met a long time ago. We did indeed on a Robbie Burns uh, party here at my home. Yes, you had a beautiful, beautiful day there. The event, the food, the, the oh, you guys were just dressed to the nines celebrating <laughs> Robbie, the, Robbie Burns Day and uh, right there on Otter Lake. So it was beautiful. And uh, when Reverend Takui uh, told me about you, it was like, oh, yeah, we know each other. Yep. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, you have been through quite the journey yourself during COVID. Your, your partner, Gerald McBride, passed away. And he did indeed yes. on the uh, the 13th of February 2020, just before all the restrictions hit us. So it was a pretty lonely time. Yes, it was right before the restrictions. So you were able to be with him? Yes, he passed away. Okay. All right. All right. So right after that, you you uh, it, the restrictions came in place because of COVID. But you have written a beautiful, beautiful song, and you had some help with, with some for, with the music. You wrote the words. You put it all together, and it is what a legacy, what a, a memory for Gerald too. Let's talk about it. I'd love to. Um, with COVID restrictions, I was not able to have a church service, and this just kind of come about um, in the sense that um, I, um, I I had said to an individual. Uh, as the person was leaving, um, when am I going to see you again? And then the restrictions lifted. I went up the valley and none of us, we had all been under restrictions. None of us had seen anybody. And it was so neat and so emotional. And it seemed that everywhere I went, um, we would say uh, to each other, when in the world are we going to see each other again? Right. And I, I came back the next weekend and this kept coming into my mind. And I woke up early in a Saturday morning and the, the loons were singing, the mist was over the lake, the sun was peeping through. And I just started to write. And I wrote for two days and the words to the song, which is dedicated to Gerald, When Will I See You Again, uh, is how it came about. And then I took the words to Kelly, my fiddle teacher in Kingston, and we played with it and so, what you hear on the CD is is a, a beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, and then it just all fell into place. I was put in touch with Dave and Kathy Daw. And actually it was uh, it was uh, thanks to COVID that I was able probably to get uh, Summit Sound, otherwise they would have been booked. The same with my guest fiddle player, Don Reed, who has done just an amazing job. Uh, particularly on When Will I See You Again, and then he plays melody with me on the other nine fiddle tunes. Writing is such a therapeutic thing, isn't it? It, it, it truly is. I, I don't have many lessons under my belt, but I grew up with music my whole life in the upper Ottawa Valley, singing and dancing, and my father called square dances back in those days and played the mouth organ. So because of my work, I was ne never able really to take up lessons for many years. I traveled in and out of hotel rooms. So it just wasn't possible for me to, to squeak and squawk and so on. And so um, it finally came to fruition that I was able to take lessons. Actually, um, it was as a result of my very dear friend, Senator Elizabeth Hubley, uh, putting through Parliament um, for National Fiddler's Day a bill and then it subsequently went through the house and we now are the only country that has um, National Fiddler's Day, the third Saturday in May, which ties into International Fiddler's Day for all of those listeners you have out there. Tune in for for National Fiddler's Day that's coming up. Oh, that's a, this, is, this is such a wonderful thing that you did. And it's all in memory of, of Gerald, too. Can let's talk a little bit about Gerald. Because you all the proceeds, uh, the net proceeds from your CD are going to the Heart Institute. So can you right. talk a little bit about Gerald's journey? It, Gerald had been sick for a very long time, Kathy, and he went undiagnosed for years and years. And um, at the end of it, he had a hole in his heart the size of an orange. But in getting to the surgery, and he was one of the oldest that, that ever had that surgery. He was 59. Yes, 59 when they finally found the hole in his heart and he was operated on.
But with all those years of being misdiagnosed, uh, he had a compromised immune system. He had permanent heart and lung damage done. And it was such a frustrating exercise until it was finally found. And he was told that he had um, uh, breathing issues, asthma, um, all of these things. And then at one point he was told it was all in his head. Uh, there, there were no issues at all. And so it was such a frustrating journey. And when I reached out to the Heart Institute, because we, we donate to the Heart Institute, Gerald had heart issues. My father passed away with heart issues and Gerald's mother had heart issues. So we've always been very, very supportive and we're blessed to have it so close to us. So after he passed away, I, I reached out to them to find out why did it take so long and for so many things to fall between the cracks. And um, the, as it turned out, they're doing research on, on what's called Oracle. And Oracle, there many people after they have heart surgery, especially if it's gone on for a long time, can have emotional issues. And in fact, in Gerald's situation, um, he, he really took a nosedive mm -hmm. and was not really able to get himself back on track. And when I shared it with the Heart Institute, uh, they read me the definition and I said, you know, I really want to be part of this research. Um, if there's anything that I can do in any way to save a life where it maybe is not in place um, now or for Gerald, but, but it's perhaps in place now. And they're making some phenomenal progress. Um, and, and that's, I was telling them about the book that I'm writing, my autobiography, but also wanting to talk about Gerald's very lengthy journey. And um, so it just sort of progressed from there. And then just par hazard, I did the CD. It was never, ever in the works. It just happened. <clears throat> so I shelved my book for a period of time and was communicating back and forth with the Heart Institute. And I, 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 I got them CDs and they just loved it. They said, is this really you? And I said, yes, this is little old me here <laughs> singing and playing fiddle. And, um, and then um, uh, they came to me a, a week or two ago and said, you know, would you be interested in going with your and Gerald's full story in the magazine? And I, I was just, I, I was truly honored to get, to get it out there. And, and if it helps others to understand what might happen after heart surgery, uh, and obviously there are a lot of people that are experiencing difficult times or the Heart Institute wouldn't be putting millions into heart, head, and vice versa. You know, you, you, it just speaks volumes about yourself, Dorothy, because you know, you went through such a hard time losing Gerald and you're trying to help others by, by what you've learned through this too. So, I, you know, bless your heart and uh, for doing all this. And, and the words, I, I've listened to your song, it's just, it's beautiful. What a beautiful tribute to Gerald. It is Thank you. Just amazing. It's, it's yeah. called Paying It Forward, Kathy. That's right. We've got to keep doing that. we got to keep doing that. The, the and for your, for your viewers, I'm just going to bring this up yep. if it's appropriate time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's the cover. And then inside, there are beautiful pictures. Um, there's a beautiful picture of Gerald and a lovely story of how the song it's all how the song really uh, how i come to write it and then on the back of it and there's a beautiful picture of a dylan the stallion i come from a purebred belgian horse farm uh in the upper ottawa valley outside of douglas and the bridle that you see on this stallion is one that was on my stallion um back in the 87 88 time frame and when i left home at a very very young age i had a suitcase in hand and I had the bridle in the other hand. So it's crossed back and forth across Canada with me for all those years. So it's truly special oh. to have it uh, in the CD. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, how can people get uh, a hold of a, a copy of your CD, Dorothy? I'm going to say it really slowly. It's Dorothy M. Gubo, D O R O T H Y M. Spelling of my last name is G O U. B-A-U-L-T as in Tom, 
at gmail.com. Excellent. And the other, uh, the, the other thing that I want to mention, Kathy, pending COVID, of course, is that I'm booked uh, for the World Summit for Women in Bangkok, uh, Thailand um, for June. And I just heard from Washington and they have a booth for me. Uh, they've invited me to bring CDs. So if it works out, I hope it does. If not this year, next year, it's waving the Canadian flag and a little bit of our Ottawa Valley heritage fiddle music. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Well, that's amazing. You're, you're taking this globally. Uh, there, Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am. And I am. I hope it works out. Oh, I'm sure it will. You're going to make it work out. I know you will. I know you will. <laughs> oh, thank you very much for joining us today. Dorothy Gubo. thank you for joining us. She's got a wonderful CD, When Will I See You Again? Beautiful tribute to her partner, Gerald McBride. Thank you very much for joining us today, Dorothy. Thanks for having me, Kathy. All the best. We'll see you.